Hey guys, Tim Miller from the Bulwark. I'm here with Sam Stein, weed correspondent. Uh, Kamala Harris ah. uh, has been alluding to this for a while and, and, and kind of implied it in an interview we'll play for you in a minute, but, but very clear offensive today uh, about how nobody should go to jail over weed and how this should be decriminalized federally. And, and I think it has some interesting political implications. I got into a Twitter feud over it. Sam's been covering this issue for his whole life, ever since Who was your Dartmouth. Twitter feud with? Sager from the Breaking Points podcast ah, over there on YouTube. Okay. They're the other side of the horseshoe from, from us. They're like the, you know, kind of uh, populist centrists. Bad. Not good. Sager wants full weed banning. I think Sager wants everybody Holy in jail banning. for weed. Oh, come on. Don't tell Sager what's happening in my house. Um, full <laughs> weed banning for Sager. He wants the jackbooted thugs coming through to to, to get for out weed? the enemy within and the weed smokers. Yeah. It's a poison, he said. It's a poison. Here, well, fine. We, Sam, you've derailed us. But we'll pull, up, pull it up on the screen here. You can see that he, he thought it was racist. This was Sager's point. He said it was racist for Kamala Harris to say it's outreach to black men to want to legalize weed. I pointed out. Not racist, actually, because people like Sam that went to Dartmouth were able to smoke weed with impunity if they wanted to, no accusations in college, right. not worry about being jailed, while meanwhile, black men were being jailed for the same offense. His response to that is that is that they're trying to poison black men now. So it's an interesting take. It's a take. I don't know. It's a take, I guess. I want your take, though. Having, yeah. I think the most interesting angle on this for me, and that you, I think, would have a special insight to, was... Like lefty activists have been agitating Democrats to go here on this for a while. And yeah. and it felt like the Biden presidency put a delay on something that was really happening at the state level in blue states almost all across the country at a federal level because Biden was old school and was just kind of uncomfortable because he's a teetotaler. And so I, I think that um, a lot of Democrats thought that, like they could use this issue to you know, it's one that's obviously popular among young voters, among voters of color, among some of the people they're going to need to get to ensure turnout at the levels they need in the next three weeks. So I'm curious in your take on that kind of historical arc and, and whether you think it's too little too late or there's still some meat on the bone here. I, I mean, I don't think it's going to like change the course of this election necessarily, but it's, it's so fascinating to watch because back in the Obama presidency, basically this was like such a interesting debate because Obama was pretty open about how much he smoked weed, right? Like right. he's part of the Chum gang. He did cocaine. Chum gang weed. throwback. Yeah. Intercepted by the Chum gang. And everyone was just sort of like, why don't you just come out for a legalization? Like we all know you're comfortable with it, but he was, you know, Obama's, he, I, he's just sort of engineered by uh, practicality or political he's practicality. He's very cautious. And so like, you know, he never came out for it. And then Biden, if I'm remembering correctly, in the 2020 primary, was like one of the only ones who is not pro-legalization. Maybe Harris wasn't there yet. I don't know. I'd have to check. I know. I think he was the only one. There might have been. Right. I kind of, some, for some reason in my mind's eye, I'm remembering one other person, but but, uh, but, uh, but at most. Maybe two. Tom. Maybe Tom. St no, Tom probably was right. I, I just feel like Biden was like such an antiquated uh, figure on this issue. Basically, the entire Democratic Party, maybe not Joe Manchin, uh, was like, this is fine. I mean, the public's with it. The public's smoking weed. Like, this is not a Democrat or Republican issue. There are plenty of conservatives who are smoking weed. And then there was the whole issue of like veterans suffering from PTSD who depended on weed medicinally. Uh, and, and there was obviously elements of support from that faction too. And so, you know, for Democrats, they've been chipping away at this. Biden was like, well, I'm, I'm not for legalization, but I'm for decriminalization. You know, let's allow, you know, localities and states to legalize. We won't go after them. We'll instruct the Justice Department to lay off. Meanwhile, like, basically no one is minus Sager, I guess, but like no one is like, oh, they shouldn't do this. Like this is, the, I mean, if you look at the Gallup polling data for this, it's like, it's like parallel to gay marriage, basically. Like back in 2020, it was polling at 30% favorability for legalization. Now it's at 70%. I mean, that's just a massive increase in the span of about two decades. And so, yeah, I mean, she probably should have come out for this earlier, but again, she wasn't a candidate earlier. Uh, and I think it's just sort of like, I think the biggest the most interesting element of this announcement is just how few ripples it's going to cause. Like Trump's not going to attack her on this. He knows his people smoke, right? Like he's, I think he's totally fine. He's, he doesn't smoke obviously, but I think he's totally fine with it. And I think he knows that if he were to say, how dare she, she's going to, you know, legalize this gateway drug and people are going to be so unproductive and yada, yada, yada. People would just sort of laugh at it because everyone's smoking already. You know, it's always when, when we talk about the bro vote, 
you know, every, like you get this cliche in your head, everybody's like thinking of different kinds of people. But there, I think there's a specific type of person that she's trying to talk to, which is basically a socially liberal person, right? A socially yes. liberal young man in their 20s or 30s, maybe listens to Rogan. That's why she's talking yeah. about going on Rogan. And who like is kind of attracted to the Trump stuff in this kind of amorphous cultural way, you know, where the Democrats seem like finger wagging scolds. And, and, and it's like a reassuring effort to be like, guys, like... You don't have to worry about that. You know, actually, we're the ones that are more in touch on, on yeah. these cultural values. Try to get back to that kind of Obama era vibe. And this is what she talked to, how, how she kind of phrased it when she was on All the Smoke with Stephen Jackson and Matt Barnes. Let's watch that. I just feel strongly people should not be going to jail for smoking weed. And we know historically what that has meant and who has gone to jail. Mm -hmm. Second, I just think we have come to a point where we have to understand that we need to legalize it and, and, and stop criminalizing this behavior. And so, and I've actually, this is not a new position for me. I, I have felt for a long time we need to legalize it. So that's where I am on that. So yeah, I mean, that, and that's the point here, right? It's just trying to reassure like, like some of the low hanging fruit people left of these Kim, kind of younger like, bros. Kim, it's just basically being like, I'm normal. Yeah. Right. I'm normal. Like that's right. all people really kind of want. Like this is a step, but like a real normal step would be if she like, Went on Rogan and was like, yeah, you know, every now and then at night I'll have like a, a small, you know, five milligram gummy and I'll just like kind of relax and go into the evening. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, you too? Like, yeah. yeah. You know, when I was young, I, you know, when my kids were driving me crazy, I would, you know, do it at bedtime. It would relax me. Like, that's just sort of like the kind of normal human being behavior at this point in time. This is so recreational. I, I yeah. mean, maybe I'm over exaggerating it because I'm just sort of like thinking of my own experiences. In your liberal bubble. By and large, I. In your hippie yeah. liberal bubble, fish, fish <laughs> listening, That's the your thing. fish it's listening not, bubble in, in the DC <laughs> core elite, elite. I have not been to a corridor. fish show in years, but I think, but that's my point is that it, it's no longer a drug associated with going yeah. to see like picture of nectar and jamming out, right? It's yeah, like right. you're basically are like using it as like a, a, a supplement to a, or, or a replacement for a glass of wine at night. Yeah, and I okay. think that's how people conceive of weed. She did have backlash for this in 2019. You mentioned this. It was like yeah. there was something in the back of my head. It took me a second to come up to what it was, though, because she made a joke during that campaign about she was asked if she'd smoked weed. She made a joke about how she's Jamaican. Of course she has. Yeah. Jamaican heritage. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then her dad got mad. Yeah. Her, her dad, dad got mad because he statement. stereotyped. Yeah, it was yeah, stereotyping yeah. Jamaican. So she was there in, in, in 2019. Well, the other, the other backlash she's endured is that when she was, you know, DA, she went after weed. Right. But I think that's, I mean, look, different times, different places. I, I actually think that that evolution is totally fine and, and explainable. Like those were laws. She executed laws and we were in a different place as a society. I think people are more likely to give her the, like, the benefit of the doubt on that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I feel like, you know, this is low hanging fruit. Yeah. And this is where the final message. So just put this tweet up on the screen. But like, Again, we're just thinking about you're trying to nudge, nudge, nudge that under like the New York Times poll showed that like under 30 black men really like have yeah. a different view of the Democratic Party than old than all black women, older 30 black men. If you just look at the data and it's just like just blunt pun intended. No one should go to jail for smoking weed, period. Right. That's it. That's the tweet. No one should go well, to jail for smoking weed. It's a clear message. It's just like, don't you don't have to like, worry about this. Yeah. There's also this perception that Democrats are just a bunch of skulls, right? Yeah. Like if you say something wrong or offensive, they're going to scold you. If you like dare to insult like their cultural beliefs, they're going to scold you. And, and they just have no tolerance for anyone else. And this at least is like, go smoke your weed. I don't give a shit. Like have fun, have at it, relax, take a night off, chill out. That's, I think, the, the benefit of this. I think everyone more or less is – not everyone, but like 75% of the country is fine with legalization. So I don't think this is a, a, t a difficult position for – I think – the signaling that she's giving is what matters here. All right, Sam, go back to bouncing all around the room. Everything. Oh yeah, right with man. You. Tweezer, whatever. Farmhouse. Let's character go out to zero. Have a movie, man. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else, subscribe to the feed. We'll see you back here soon. Enjoy your weed gummies.